All right, so my um, GE oven microwave has been kind of acting kind of strange lately. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And so uh, right now, that's what the screen looks like. It looks fine. But let's see if we try cooking our food here. Put it to time and then hit start. Oh. All right, so so far it's working, but lately the screen's been kind of glitching and then it'll stop working. And so, um, trying to figure out what the problem is. So far, so good. Now, you see some li little bit of glitching going on in the screen. And so I'm thinking either it's a control board or the, they call it Digitron, the screen itself. But I'm thinking it's a more control board. So, so far, so good. Sorry for making you watch this whole thing, but I want to show you exactly what's happening here. Okay, now screen's kind of glitching here. Okay, see that? See that? You see little, oh, see? It's wigging out. And this is what's happening, and then it'll stop working. So now look at my screen. So, I mean, you would think it's a Digitron. I should just buy the Digitron, but um, I think it's uh, the control board. So earlier I talked about um, possibly an uh, issue being a, a control board. And the reason I came to the conclusion is because this is actually my second time opening this up. The first time I opened this up, I did uh, some of the cheaper alternatives like check the micro switch, uh, check the thermostat, and check the capacitor. And then I did watch a YouTube video where a, a guy told talked about um, maybe possibly stray uh, microwaves hitting the control panel causing it to go flicker and, and malfunction. So um, I did create a little foil barrier. I'll just have to show you that when I open this up. Anyways, uh, having tried all those things, that's why I think it's a uh, now control board, a more expensive option. Um, so anyways, but the checking the continuity of the switch was pretty easy. Um, so th this is actually a, a brand new micro switch that I bought. I haven't used yet because mine were good, but this is a new one. So for checking continuity, you basically put the probe on, on the leads here and then you push the button. And then if it, if it, if it makes a beep, not, beep sound, that means uh, the switch is good, has continuity. So when I push it, see the little button? I push it in, and it has a very distinct clicking noise. So this switch is good. And so what I did is I did, I did test all the switches inside the microwave the same way, except for one. I have one switch that actually is is uh, actually uh, is opposite. When you when you push in, it dis disengages the switch, but when it pops out. It engages and so it's uh, so it's opposite. But that, that one switches. Everything else you have to push into for it to engage. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, so if you get a switch where um, when you first put the probe on the leads and it makes a beep noise, that means it's engaged already. And when you push it in, the beep, beeping should stop. Uh, same with the um, the thermostat. You basically put the uh, the probes on the the two leads and it should 
make a, a continuity sound like this. So, um, and then I also did test a capacitor. Uh, there's a couple of few videos on YouTube you can find how to test capacitor. So I did test my capacitor and felt that it was okay. So, so what I did is I, again, I, I um, made a little foil barrier, uh, what the guy on YouTube talked about. And um, I was hoping that was the issue, but of course, after I closed it all up and, and put the microwave in the hole, um, I had the same issue. So uh, loose microwave wasn't the issue for me. So anyways, I did my cheaper options. Now I'm gonna do a more expensive option. I did buy a control board. Um, I better just I better touch metal here. You want to discharge before you open any. I've always been told that whenever you touch any kind of circuit board, to discharge any static in your hand. So, anyways, I did buy a new control board. I'm gonna install today. I'm hoping this that's the issue. This is the control board, and so I'm gonna install this. Um, and then if this doesn't work, of course, um, uh, I may go to the other resort, which is the Digitron, the display itself. Um, but uh, from what I read, I'm fairly, fairly confident it's a control board. So um, we'll see. All right, let me go and open my microwave up now. Uh, so I did remove uh, 21 screws. So there's one here, uh, three on the side, three on top. Um, three on the side here, one on bottom, and then one here. And then there's a couple in the back. So this should, there's a couple in the back. So this should come right up. Uh, here's my one of my thermostat and then here's I have looks like on this one I have one two micro switch here if you, if you notice when I open this up if I open this up um, that little switch pops up um, when I and that but when I close this when I close that uh, both switches uh, get pressed in. Uh, this one here, when it gets pressed in, that's, that disengages. When this one gets pressed in, it engages the switch. So uh, it's, uh, continuity is when it's pressed in, and this continuity is uh, when it's popped out. And then I have one more on the other side. I have one on this side. And this, this one here, you, you press in uh, to get continuity. I have a thermostat here, and a thermostat here. So my microwave has actually has three thermostats um, and three micro switch. Now I'm gonna go and mess with it, but I'm gonna first discharge my capacitor. I've, I've, I've heard many videos saying discharge your capacitor before you, because it may hold a charge. So I'm gonna go and uh, touch the probes with my pliers, my needle nose plier, to disengage any kind of charge that it may have in the capacitor so uh, before I before I work on anything by the way I did a, I did already unplug it so it's unplugged but again the capacitor may hold the charge so I'm gonna go and discharge that so uh, I just want to show you this too this is uh, the first time I did this here's my uh, foil barrier that I put in um, hoping this will block the, sp uh, the stray microwave but it didn't work for me I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and remove it um, and here's my other foil barrier I put in to hoping to uh, block the stray microwave, but okay. So I did um, um, raise, up, raise up my capacitor so I could have a better access so I could uh, discharge it. And so what I basically did is take my, take my pl needle nose plier and I touched both leads. There's, there's, two, there's two leads back here you can't see, but I touched those two leads with my, um, with my needle nose plier and then also they also talked about touching the lead 
and also touching the body, touching the lead and the body to discharge it. Same with the other one. So I touch the, I'm touching the, the one, one lead next to the body and then also I'm touching both leads. So they, they said this is how you discharge the capacitor uh, in case there's any stored energy inside. Anyways, uh, I also want to share a couple of things with you guys. Um, so according to my research, they said that if you have a bad um, uh, switch, um, it could cause microwave does not start, microwave stops unexpectedly, microwave operates with door op operates with the door open, and microwave turns on but does not heat food. That's if you have a a uh, a bad micro switch. Um, also, if you have a bad thermostat, um, oven oven does not reach desired temperature overheating beyond the set temperature um, oven cooking or baking results and oven temperature fluctuating more than usual now they, I talk about ovens because my microwave is actually an oven slash microwave so that's the reason um, I have that in there but if you have a bad thermostat so my yeah mine's a mine is a, a oven slash microwave I've never used an oven before but that's what mine is, and so this is what this is saying. And so I ru ruled out micro switch, I ruled out thermostat, now I'm gonna do the control board. Um, and of course I tried that experiment with the foil barrier, that didn't work for me, so. Now my, my next goal is control board. The first two things, micro switch and the thermostat, they cost, they cost less than, I don't know, 30 bucks or so for those switches, and thermostat. Um, I haven't opened them, so I may send it, send it back, matter of fact. So, so far I have no money in it. But the, this uh, control board, it did cost me, um, with tax and, ta tax and shipping, it did cost me um, $188. And again, I wouldn't have done all this if my microwave was 200 bucks, but unfortunately this stupid thing uh, cost $2,400. And so I figured it's worth trying uh, spend two three hundred dollars and save myself some money because that thing's ridiculous that cost twenty four hundred dollars but so this is um this is my control board um so this is what I'll be replacing today so I'll be looks like I'll be removing four screws and of course these little leads um, yeah, before you remove anything, take a picture that way you know where where it goes. It looks like it's pretty, it looks like they can't go anywhere else. They're all um, you can't fit anywhere else. It looks like the way it's designed. But just in case, take some pictures. It's always a good idea taking pictures. Never hurts. Looks like in order to move this move this one, you press this little tab, this little tab, and then that the thing bends back and you can pull that out. See that? Same with this one, you push that tab, and that, see when you press it, that little thing comes up. Same thing with this one, press the tab. Same with this one. I can't get in a good grip. Oh, there we go. So, and then I have one more down here. Another, another one down here. So anyways, the, the same thing I imagine. So there, it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I did, I did get the bottom one removed the same way as the top, the top ones. You just basically, you press here and that opens up and you pull it out. So here's my control board. Now, uh, looking at this control board, I've noticed, if you notice here, these three seem kind of dark. And I've, I remember seeing this in another video, saying that if it's dark, it's a possibility it's gone bad. See those other two over here? These two, they look pretty good. But these two over here, uh, these three over here, seem kind of dark. 
so I'm I'm hoping that's the that's the culprit. Now, I'm not sure about these ones here. They're not as some of it does appear to be dark, but I can't be for sure. But anyways, I'm hoping this is a this is the the culprit for my uh, microwave not working right. If this is it, then it basically cost me 188 bucks to fix. So um, I mounted my control board back again, but before I mounted my control board, I did plug in the bottom one first. It does seem kind of awkward, so I plugged this one first, and then I plugged this one, this one here, and then I'm gonna connect the rest right now. So this went right there, and then this one went right here. It's also color coded, I don't know if you noticed that or not. I did also take a picture of it too, but if you notice, it's color coded. White, um, uh, what, what is it, yellow or orange? And my other one here, the last one here, plugs in. Oh, it's kind of tight too. Okay, so. So I did here. I did it here. Click, audible click. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six all together. So, it's all connected. So I just have to put the cover back on again. Actually, I need to um, go and put the capacitor down again and sell that. But otherwise, again, I, the only thing I did is I, um, I cleared the, made sure it wasn't the micro switches. Uh, I, I made sure it was the thermostat. I also ruled out capacitor, and the next thing I did is I got a control board. So hoping this is it. This is it. If this doesn't work, then I'm gonna, I think, um, do the Digitron. That's this over here. That's 260 bucks. That display, this display here, that's 260 bucks. It's called Digitron. So, but uh, I'm fairly confident this is it because we've seen that burnt mark. Um, all right, so I put my microwave back together and in its hole. And so I'm gonna go and test it out. I just put a, a cup of water in here. Screen, it looks nice and bright, actually. If you see a red light, that's because it's off my camera. But my screen is not going berserk. My screen, it looks nice and steady. No more, no more glitching. Yep, not glitching, so it looks like I don't need a Digitron screen. That control board looks like it took care of it. Oh, that's, that's hot. <laughs> hot. All right, guys, that's it, folks. So. I fixed my microwave for 188 bucks. Saved myself $2,400. Um, so anyways, if I was you, I would, uh, again, test the micro switch and uh, thermostat first, those are the cheapest options. And then, in my case, it was control board. I never questioned the magnetron because I never had a problem of uh, heating my food. Just that if it, it, it just stopped working. So anyways, try those two cheaper options first. Okay, thanks, have a good day, bye.